All right. Welcome, everyone. Today is Monday, February 7th, and this is the organizational meeting for the Committee on City Services. I'm just going to disable the waiting room. There we go. Okay. Uh, so I just want to announce that the, media, the meeting is being audio and video recorded. And the first order of business is calling the meeting to order and a roll call. Um, our administrative assistant, Laura Kretzler, who typically does that, is not here today due to family emergency. Um, so according to our city council rules um, for the organizing committee, the way names were um, released from the council president um, it determines who begins chairing the meeting before we elect our chair and vice chair. Um, so because my name is first in the alphabetical order, um, that's me to get started and I will call the roll. Um, so the first one's easy, Councillor Foster, here. Councillor Gore? Here. Councillor Elemento P. Councillor Labarge? Here. And Councillor Perry? I am here. Okay, excellent. Uh, the second, the third item, on our agenda is public comment. And I see one member of the public here. You're welcome to raise your virtual hand or your actual hand. Okay. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, uh, my name is Robert Bulwers and thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'd like to address the matter of the renewal of Solicitor Seawald's contract. Um, I'd like you to know that for 20 years of my career, I worked in executive <laughs> positions in local government. So I had any number of opportunities to work with city solicitors, city attorneys, county attorneys, legal staffs, et cetera. Uh, most recently, I served on the Charter Review Commission for Northampton, and I currently serve as the chair of the Ranked Choice Voting Implementation Committee. So in those capacities, I've had uh, the, dis <laughs> I have spent over 30 plus meetings was Solicitor Seawald. And during that time, I believe I've come to some recognitions um, about him. Uh, one is that uh, while he can be very annoying at times, particularly when he tells me that I can't do what I wanna do due, due to the open meeting law, uh, I've come to realize that whenever he says something like that, it's always to the better and the result improves what it is that we're working on in addition to that, and in particular with regard to the um, Charter Review Commission, it, it, it is clear to me that Alan is expert on the city charter. He's expert on mass general laws. And most importantly for the council, he's a vigilant guardian of what are legislative duties and what are executive authorities. And I think you should be very comforted that he's there watching over your interests in the various forums that, that he participates. Um, you know, I believe that he's a credit to his profession and I think we're lucky to have him as city solicitor and I recommend that you rehire him. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, um, I do not see any other members of the public here. Um, Mayor Shara, I see you here, but I'm assuming that you're here to speak to the appointment um, when the time is right. Yes, or just, you know, just here if you need me. Excellent, thank you. Um, okay, so the fourth item on our agenda is the election of a chair and vice chair for um, the Committee on City Services. And the way this works is we'll accept nominations for chair. Um, those nominated will have a chance to speak. Uh, we'll take a vote. Um, that person will take over running the meeting, and then we'll do the same thing with um, nominations for vice chair. Um, any candidates nominated would have a chance to speak, um, and then we'll move on from there. Um, so the first order of business are, are here. Where, are there any nominations for chair for the Committee on City Services? There you go. Council Perry? Well, I will nominate Council Labarge for the chair. Okay. There are other nominations. Councilor Labarge? Yes, um, I'm gonna speak. Oh, um, I'm still, oh, excuse me, Councilor Labarge, still taking nominations. Just oh, oh, okay. 
and slightly awkward position being the person um, running the meeting, um, I speak last. Um, I am interested in putting uh, my own name forward as well for chair. I just wanna check if there are additional nominations. Okay, um, so hearing two nominations, Councillor Foster and Councillor Labarge, uh, we'll leave it, each have a chance to speak. We'll take a vote and then we'll move on to vice chair. Councillor Labarge, nominated first, would you like to go first? I can't hear you, Karen. Okay, I'm gonna come closer. Council of Barge, you and I were both nominated. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Okay, so I, we, each, we each have a chance to speak before um, we vote. Would you like to go first? Yes, um, I have been on city service for a good four years. Previous to that, it used to be called Social Services and Veterans Affairs. And I was the chair on that for quite a long time. And I had some, a really terrible experience with that. And I had to do all the minutes, go ahead and notify all the agencies in the city of Northampton, inviting them. And finally, Councilor Dwight at that time came on the committee with me. He said, no way should you be doing these minutes. I've had a couple of counselors who said, no, I work all day. I don't have time for that. I love this job. I love even now it being called city service. It's very valuable, a very valuable position. No matter if you are a chair or a vice chair, I like doing it. And I, I like working with my counselors. I think that the transparency and communication is very, very valuable. And I think it's a learning experience for no matter who becomes a chair or a vice chair. So yes, I am interested in doing it again. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor Labarge. Um, is, can you hear me better now? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, excellent, great. Um, thank you. And um, so as the second person since I nominated myself, um, I'll speak as well. Uh, I, I joined the Committee on City Services uh, two years ago as my first council term. And Councilor Labarge, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you. Um, Councilor Labarge has been really proactive with setting the agenda, looking at appointments to city boards and commissions and setting up a schedule and, and soliciting input um, on talking with department heads. Um, so my nomination isn't in any way, um, any kind of critique of Councilor Labarge's work there. I think you've done a fantastic job. I've learned quite a bit. It's more in my own interest in chairing a committee. Um, you know, I look forward to taking on more of a leadership role. Um, the City Services Committee is, um, you know, the, the, the committee that I rank second on my list for um, committees to join. I think that it's a committee with a tremendous amount of potential, um, both with our you know, the the charge of overseeing and, and confirming or potentially um, unlikely not confirming mayoral appointments um, as department heads and city boards and commissions, as well as there's some opportunity for the city services uh, committee to provide oversight um, and, and a space uh, for public conversations. And so, um, you know, as, as you all heard um, last week with the resolution to establish the select committee, um, one of my greatest interests is looking at how we can diversify our city boards and commissions. And while those appointments come from the mayor's office, um, you know, it's a great interest of mine to work with the mayor's office and, and to really look at what we can do there um, as a committee and, and how we can support that important work. Um, so, so that's really my interest in that. Um, the way this works is when we do a vote, you'll say the name of the counselor um, that you would support as chair. Okay, so it's not a yes or no, it's a name. And um, fortunately, Solicitor Seawald is here in case of a tie vote. Um, so um, alphabetically, for, I'm first again. So Councillor Foster, I would vote for Councillor Foster. Um, Councillor Gore. Councillor Labarge. Okay, Councillor Perry. Oh, you were muted. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Councillor Foster. And Council Labarge. Council Labarge. Okay. 
So we have a tie. Um, Solicitor Sewell, before we take up your appointment, may we call on you? <laughs> and this is the ultimate test. Uh, the vote has failed. Um, this is the reason that we recommend against four member committees, but we won't uh, go to that place right now. Uh, you've got to start over again. The, it's failed. Yep. Okay. So we start over again with nominations and vote. <laughs> okay. Excellent. All right. We'll rewind the tape five minutes. Um, so once again, we'll be taking names um, for chair of the committee on city services. We'll be taking recommendations for names. I will again nominate myself. I will nominate myself. Okay. Councilor Perry, Councilor Gore, other nominations? <laughs> Okay, we'll try again, and then we'll uh, we'll see we'll see where we end up. Council Labarge, did you want to add anything to what you said before? No. Okay, and I don't either. Um, one final question for you, Solicitor Seawald, or not final? Um, but in in council meetings, as we do our votes, we go to the next letter for alphabetical. Do we do that again this time? Uh -uh. Just to, that's a custom. There's no obligation to do that, and I believe that, you know, the custom is intended to prevent the same person from having to vote early in the vote, and the same people getting to see what other people have done before they have to vote. So, uh, but that's just a custom. Uh, there's no legal requirement that you do that. Sure, it's in our council rules, so we'll go for it. Okay. Um, so this time, Councillor Gore. Um, Councillor Foster. Okay. Um, Councillor Labarge. Councillor Foster. Councillor Perry. Councillor Foster. Okay. Councillor Foster. Councillor Foster. Okay. Um, with that matter set, our next order is nomination and vote for vice chair. Are there are nominations for vice chair. Council Labarge? Yes, um, Jamila Gore. Okay. Are there other nominations for vice chair? Councilor Gore, this is your moment. You have a chance to speak um, to the nomination of Councilor Gore for vice chair. Um, I thank Councilor Labarge for the nomination. And I think that it would be a good learning experience for me to be vice chair on city services. It's my first committee, one of my first committees I'm being on. And since I'm new to the council, it would be a good way to learn more about city services. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then uh, the same process, but perhaps slightly easier than last time is um, we'll vote on vice chair. And again, you'll say the name of the person um, that you are voting for, keeping my alphabet straight here. Um, Councillor Labarge. Um, Councillor Gore. Councillor Perry. Councillor Gore. Okay, Councillor Foster, Councillor Gore, and Councillor Gore. Councillor Gore. Okay, excellent. So the... Um, Chair of the Committee on City Services for this council term will be Councillor Foster and the Vice Chair will be Councillor Gore. Um, very much look forward to working with you all. Um, our next order of business is an interview and departmental update um, with Attorney Alan Seewald. Um, as we heard at our recent City Council meeting, uh, Mayor Shara um, has submitted Solicitor Seewald's name for reappointment as City Solicitor and the council chose to refer that appointment to the Committee on City Services. So he is here. Mayor Shara, did you want to speak to that appointment? You're welcome to. I'm happy to, you know, I, I feel like I, I spoke to it at council, but I, you know, again, I'm very happy to, to share um, that, you know, I, I, I believe and thank you so much, Mr. Boris, it's good to see you. Um, that Solicitor Seawald is one of the foremost experts on municipal law in this area. Um, 
And I just really have enjoyed working with him for years. I, you know, I, I talked about at council of my experience working with him as a counselor and um, really feeling supported by his services um, on the council side. And, you know, I, I'm uh, interested to hear what you all will discuss with him, but he, um, you know, also another thing that I shared at council was um, how deeply he values that this is his own community that he's practicing in. Um, and it's the community that he's lived in for a very long time and he raised his family here and that it's incredibly meaningful to him to, um, to be able to do this work in his own, his own community. So, um, and I'm happy, you know, any, anything else you'd like me to share, I'm happy to, but um, I have just the ultimate faith in him. And I also, um, I know I really enjoy working with him and I, I know that uh, many of you have as well. Thank you, Thank you Mayor Shara. Um, Solicitor Seawald, so we had sent, you'd received from Councillor Labarge and Laura ahead of time, a couple of questions over email, if you'd like to speak to those, and then we'll open it up for additional questions from councillors. Well, let me break this into two, uh, uh, two presentations. One is about generally the legal services provided to the city. Uh, for the past 10 years, I've been city solicitor and I've uh, overseen all of the legal services provided to the city. There are a few other lawyers who join me in uh, providing very specific special counsel services to the city. The main uh, lawyers are Layla Taylor, who is our labor lawyer, Lewis Moore, another Northampton resident, who's our environmental lawyer, who has helped us very much with the roundhouse issues and with the uh, um, you know any host of DPW issues and uh, Robert Spencer who does the real estate titles and conveyancing. Um, most of what is done at, at the uh, city solicitor's office um, is general municipal law. Um, I provide counsel to the the mayor, all of the departments, the city council. Um, and um, I, I guide the city through many issues concerning open meeting law, public records, conflicts of interest, uh, finance, planning and DPW. I assist DPW in all of the major projects that we do around town, uh, road projects and such. Um, and the other part of, of municipal law is the litigation that, that uh, municipalities engage in. Uh, by far, the vast number of lawsuits that are filed in, uh, in Northampton are uh, sent directly to our insurer and are handled by the insurer. My involvement in those lawsuits is to make sure that the, uh, um, that the notice is sent to the, uh, to the insurance company in a timely manner and that the insurance company is, is you know, taking the baton and running with the, with the matter and defending our interests. Um, right now, there are uh, seven of those claims out there. Um, uh, one against one involving uh, Smith Volk. Um, most of them are involving the police department, which is quite common um, that the police department would be the, the center of most of the lawsuits because uh, they are involved in most of the situations that uh, those kinds of crises arise. And um, so, um, so those are out there and I am monitoring and making sure those are being handled uh, properly by the insurance company and by the lawyer who is assigned by the insurance company to represent the city. Uh, the other a major category are zoning and land use uh, lawsuits. Those generally uh, arise out of decisions made by the Conservation Commission or the Planning Board or the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I defend those cases myself. Uh, there are three of those right now. I will say that uh, in a city uh, of Northampton size with the kind of development that goes on here, that is an exceedingly low number. Um, and I'd be happy to discuss my philosophy on why that is, but that is an exceedingly low number. I have defended over the years that I've been a municipal lawyer, which is 36, uh, I've defended hundreds of, of zoning cases and most of them have not been in Northampton. 
Um, I help with enforcement of land use. Uh, there is just one enforcement action that's underway, a wetlands violation on Riverbank Road, uh, but um, otherwise our departments handle those quite well. Uh, there are miscellaneous litigation. We have a, a denial of a license to carry a firearm that's under appeal that I'm handling. And the, the single major litigation that the city is involved in, that the city is the plaintiff in, meaning that brought the lawsuit, uh, is uh, a lawsuit that uh, involves the construction of the deck attached to the police department uh, facility. And there have been made, there were major leaks into the, uh, into the police facility after that was uh, constructed and we had it reconstructed and that we're now seeking compensation for what we spent to reconstruct it. Um, and so that's the general overview of how we provide um, legal services um, here in the city. Uh, I will say that I try to make myself as available as possible. Uh, I try to be very responsive to counselors and mayor and department heads who need me to guide them through uh, uh, matters. And, um, and uh, as, I, as the mayor pointed out, it's really been my honor to do that for the city. As, uh, as the mayor said, I've, I've lived here for almost 42 years now. Uh, I did raise my, my kids here. They went to the Northampton schools and they were born at Cooley. And, um, and uh, uh, so um, I, I'm really pleased to be performing this service for the city and from my hometown. So that's my overview of the legal services. If there are specific questions, um, uh, and you know, as far as the interview part of this, if you would like me to address that, or if you wanna ask questions, I'll, I'm happy to do either. Sure, I, I think we're happy to have you respond to counselor's questions. Um, Councilor Labarge, I see your hand up. Um, Attorney Seawald, I wanna thank you today for talking on the phone and especially some of the concerns I had about the budget book in general, okay? Where I could actually see where people would be confused. If you look at the legal expenses right away, you know, they're saying, well, at 275,000, that's a lot of money, counselor. And you try to explain to them Exactly. That's not it. It's what we have to pay for legal fees and so forth like that. And they would go on the website and have difficulties trying to find out where that expense is going to. And I think, like you said today, you could see where there would be a problem because in the budget book, it really doesn't explain it up how many cases i think that's what people want to hear how many cases not names but cases and i think you explained it very well so when i get calls i know what to say and i want to thank you for working with me for 10 years i have no complaints about you i think you've been excellent i have called you many times of concerns and so forth and i appreciate everything you do for our city thank you counselor Other counselors, do you have questions for Solicitor Seawald? Solicitor Seawald, I have one question on, and I apologize for not submitting it ahead of time, um, but I, I think you can probably speak off the cuff to this one. Um, some feedback I've heard from constituents, and it's mostly if they would like to hear a different answer than, than we've received from you, is that um, there is an, uh, you know, some kind of, some conflict between you as city solicitor serving both the mayor's office and the council. And I'm wondering if you could speak to that as well as if um, kind of what the, the most common or best practice is there um, around, you know, kind of who you're serving or um, if, if that is separate in other communities. There are a lot of models out there. There are in-house models. There are, you know, outsource models like my, like ours. Um, and uh, they're all, and so there are many different ways to, to do this. Um, let me be clear about one thing. I represent the city of Northampton. I don't represent any individuals in the city of Northampton. I, I am beholden to the city of Northampton as a municipality, as a municipal corporation. Okay? And um, 
and you know it is a little bit um you know i can understand how that feeling can arise because i'm appointed by the mayor i spend most of my time dealing with the mayor and with the executive departments but um i hope it's been clear over the years that i have provided the best counsel I can to the city council. And I've been as responsive as I can be to the concerns of the city council. And um, so, yes, I understand the concern. I really do. Um, and there are situations where uh, there is so much acrimony between the mayor and the city council that at times, um, you know, there has to be a separation of council. And as a matter of fact, that happened many, many years ago when a different Labarge was sitting on the city council and I was hired to represent the city council as special counsel because there was so much conflict between council and the mayor's office. Uh, and one of the counselors was suing the council and the mayor. So I, I, you know, there are situations that will arise like that, but I think generally, I think this is a good model and I think um, it's worked well over the 10 years that I've been here. Um, and uh, I am certainly open to ways to make it better, but uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that's necessary, but uh, I do understand the concern. Thank you, solicitor. Uh, Council of Barge. You're muted, Council of Barge. I want to thank you for bringing that question up because it is a big question. And um, I think it's going to be up to counselors on how they feel about that decision because sometimes maybe it's absolutely necessary. I don't know. It's like, I'm going to find out. I'm going to research other towns, other cities, if they have a part-time attorney for city councilors. I, I don't know, but I know issues have come up. Every term that I've served on, counselors have always said, we need a part-time attorney, just in case something came up that we could challenge, whatever. So I don't know. But I have to say, I was involved with that situation um, with Attorney Seawald, where we were sued by another Labarge as city councilor. And it was, we won the case anyway, so I was happy about that. If I could address the idea of having a part-time just-in-case lawyer, go ahead. If a matter arises that a lawyer is needed, we can find lawyers, you know, and uh, it, it does arise also because sometimes I have a conflict of interest. As a matter of fact, there was a case that involved the parking lot of my office here at Roundhouse Plaza, and we had to find another lawyer. So. Councilor Barge, if, if another the need for another lawyer arises, we can certainly do that on a case by case basis. Okay, that's good to know that. Thank you. Other counselors, other questions? Okay, I'll, I'll take the liberty. Oh, Councilor Perry? I don't, I don't have any questions. I just okay. have to say that um, Solicitor Seawald, your reputation precedes you and I've heard nothing but the highest of recommend, recommendations for you. So I just wanna salute you for your job well done for the city. Thank you, uh, Councilor Perry, and I'm glad to have you as my ward counselor. Thank oh, you. Really? Maybe we'll, you know, Councilor Perry and Councilor Gore, maybe we'll actually get to meet someday. That would be nice. Huh. And truly, Solicitor Seawald, I'll just add that the number of times I've, I've given you a phone call or an email, um, you know, you, you've, your response time has, has been extraordinary and um, a level of helplessness or help, helpfulness um, has shown through as well as um, to me, it's been clear that your interest is, is uh, in representing the city um, is, is, you know, and, and navigating that. So um, I very much uh, appreciated your counsel over the last, past two years. Um, Thank you, counsel. If, if there's nothing else, then, um, the next step would be a motion to make a positive recommendation to the full council. I would accept that motion. Council Labarge? Yes, um, I would like a motion to appoint attorney Alan Seawall as city solicitor with a positive recommendation to full city council. Second that. 
Okay, so motion made by Council Labarge, seconded by Councillor Perry. Um, roll call, Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Foster, yes. Councillor Gore? Yes. And Councillor Labarge? Yes. Okay. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Solicitor. Appreciate it. Uh, next up is um, B22.020, appointments to boards, committees, and commissions. This was referred by city council. Councilors Perry and Gore, I know this is your first time, but Laura had a chance to connect with you about the typical process. So appointments um, are recommended by the mayor, and then it's our charge to uh, confirm those appointments. Um, you know, in, typically people who it would be their first service term we reach out um, and interview individually and then report back to the committee. Um, and so what we can do is just go in the order uh, that we have this on the agenda. Um, the first appointment is Arts Council, Garrett Williams of Fort Sun Hill Drive, Florence. I was actually the person who interviewed Garrett. So I'll report back briefly on our conversation. Um, I had a, an opportunity to talk to Garrett over the, the weekend. Um, his really interesting um, appointment. He moved to Northampton during the pandemic. Um, he had been working actually in Los Angeles as a lighting technician. He was a gaffer um, in the film industry. And, um, you know, during the pandemic, the desire to be closer to extended family, he had grown up in Beverly. Um, when he moved back, uh, he was actually working for Valley Solar as an installer. And wouldn't you know, in the way that Northampton works, he ended up installing at Brian Foote's house. Um, so he met Brian Foote, um, who's the director of the Arts Councilor, through that, and, um, you know, they were, uh, Garrett was expressing a desire to be more involved in his new community and ways, um, you know, what he talked about with me is that, you know, serving as a lighting technician, working in the film industry, it's, it's really kind of all consuming. Um, so he was looking for a way to use the skills and background and talent he has in his new community to get to know more people, but without it being his sort of uh, all consuming job. Um, so Brian had recommended to him that he applied for the Arts Council, um, which he did. Um, he's currently now working in Lee for a company called Limelight Productions that um, rents and installs lighting for other productions. Um, so he's, he's excited to be working back in the industry in that way. Um, we did talk about the Arts Council, um, especially with him being newer to the community. Um, you know, we had a, a fairly open discussion that the Arts Council has seen some current controversy over the past couple of months. And, you know, he said that he's really open to joining a committee um, and helping to work past that. You know, he's really interested in advancing the arts in Northampton and, uh, you know, looking forward to and able to work with a wide variety of people. Um, and, and Brian was the one that that had recommended his, his you know, he applied in the first place. So, um, you know, I, I definitely, uh, after our conversation, feel confident um, with a positive recommendation uh, for Garrett, Willi Garrett Williams to um, serve on the Arts Council. So I will make a motion for a positive recommendation to full council. Is there a second? Second. A second. O okay, um, that one, I'll, uh, that was same time. I'll give that one to Councillor Perry. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, alphabetically, I'm first. Councillor Foster, yes. Councillor Gore, yes. Councillor Labarge, yes. Councillor Perry, yes. Okay, let me get back to my agenda. I lost my mouse. Hang on. There we are. Okay, excellent. Uh, and the next appointment we had to the Parks and Rec, Rec Commission uh, with Kelsey Flynn. And that was yes, Councillor Gore. You spoke with her. Yeah, okay. I spoke with Kelsey Flynn um, last Thursday, and um, she talked about how her kids go to recreational activities at the Northampton Parks and Rec and how she's been involved with them for a few years now. And um, she really um, enjoys, you know, the programming that they have there for her kids. And um, she says that she would be a, a voice um, for the Parks and Rec Commission. She would vocal you know get the word out because she used to be on the radio and she's a good at, at vocalizing and and getting the word out about things and so i would give her a positive recommendation for the parks and rec commission um she seemed to really want to be involved i'll second that 
And I apologize on the last one, I forgot to ask if there was any discussion among counselors on the motion. So we have a motion from Councillor Gore for a positive recommendation, second from Councillor Labarge. Any discussion? Yes, Councillor Labarge. No. Oh, okay. Councillor Perry. I, I will say that I also will wholeheartedly endorse uh, Kelsey Flynn. I've known her for a number of years. Uh, she's been involved at, in our school system at the PTO, and I think she'd be an excellent addition. I'm going to jump in and say that too. Kelsey Flynn is a stellar human being, and uh, I'm I was really excited to see her name on the um, coming forth for a referral. Okay, so we'll take a, a roll call vote. Councilor Gore, yes. Councilor Labarge, yes. Councilor Perry, yes. Yes. And Councilor Foster, yes. Okay. Uh, next up is Chris Tate, who um, is applying to the planning board. Okay, Councilor Perry. And that's me. I had a nice discussion with uh, Chris Tate. Um, and this one is a little different because he is actually just being promoted uh, for this position. He has already been an associate for the uh, planning board. And uh, I, I found out that this board, actually there's, there's seven seats and two associates and everyone has a vote whether or not you're an associate. So uh, you know, a lot of the work that he would be doing, he's already done. Um, he also used to work as a consulting civil engineer for clients to see uh, he was on the other side. Uh, so he's had a lot of insight into the process. Um, and one of the coolest things for me as a self-proclaimed nerd is that he is also a zoning nerd and he really just loves to work um, and has had, a, had great work um, with Wayne and everyone there on and Carolyn, uh, everyone there. And so I can wholeheartedly say that I will move to nominate him for uh, the position with a positive recommendation. Is I'll there a second? second? Council of Barge. Okay, so positive recommendation made by Council Perry, seconded by Council of Barge. Any discussion? Okay, nerds unite. Um, do a vote, Council of Barge. Yes. Council Perry. Yes. Councilor Foster, yes. Councilor Gore. Yes. Okay, excellent. So we moved to positive recommendation of Chris Tate to the planning board. And last but certainly not least is the application for Jacob Dissinger of Leeds for the Trust Fund Committee. That must be you, Councilor Labarge. Yes. Um, this is a reappointment. And with reappointments, we don't go ahead and call them because the mayor's office handles that part of it. They actually call and ask that individual, the applicant, if they still want to, you know, be back on it. And that's why it's called a reappointment. So anyways, I will be willing to accept a motion for the reappointment of J Jacob Dissinger to the trust fund committee with a positive recommendation. I'll second that. Okay, so motion made by Councilor Labarge, seconded by Councilor Perry. Any discussion? Okay, Councilor Perry. Yes. Councilor Foster. Yes. Councilor Gore. Yes. And Councilor Labarge. Yes. Okay, excellent. So we'll move all of those forward to City Council. The next item on the agenda is to set our meeting schedule for 2022-2023. Um, we typically meet the first Monday of the month at four o'clock that will come up against uh, a couple of holidays. My apologies. I didn't look at the, I didn't have a chance to look at the calendar ahead of time, um, but we can always move those as needed. Um, but we do need to vote to set that meeting schedule. Any discussion or I guess we could. Yes. Council Perry. Yes. So I had just have a personal um, conflict at four, four o'clock. I I do all the transportation for my children. So if we could push that a little bit back, um, I have to drop my daughter off at 4.30, so five o'clock, 4.45 would be better for me. And that's Council every Monday. That's every Monday, okay. Council so Labarge? He's saying at 4.30, is that okay? He's he's saying 4.45 or five o'clock. Quarter of five or five o'clock? Yes. Doesn't make any difference. It's fine with me as well. Actually, it's a little bit better. Councillor Gore, what about you? I could do five or four forty-five. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do then is actually move this agenda item to our next meeting. 
so that uh, I can confirm with Laura. And what I'll do is confirm with Laura that we can do uh, five o'clock would probably give everybody a little breathing room. Okay. Um, so I'll confirm with Laura that we can do five o'clock um, based on, because she needs to clerk for other city meeting schedules. I'm not aware of any others on Monday, so it should be fine, um, but I'll confirm and then we'll um, post the next meeting publicly, but I'll, I'll confirm that with her and get back to you all about a time. Great. Thank you, everyone. Okay. All right. And then um, also at that point, we can take a look to see if there, um, which Monday holidays will conflict um, that we will need to, to shift things around. Okay. Great. Okay, uh, the next item is new business. And um, typically this is the opportunity in the committee meeting to think about, um, you know, if, if there are department heads or um, city matters that we wanna be sure that we consider in the Committee on City Services. And this is a time that we would bring those forth um, so that I can work with Laura um, to bring people in. And so um, I know this is a little bit newer for you, Councillor Perry and Gore, um, Council, but you know, if there are, are issues going on in the city that you want us to take a look at, this is the time to bring that up, always in between meetings as well. Um, and Councillor Labarge, I saw your hand up. Yes, um, just to keep in mind that, we do have um, another applicant that was sent to us at our last city council meeting. So mm -hmm. that should be put into the agenda for the month of March. Excellent, thank you. Okay, we'll make sure that gets there. And that's um, Dallas Dukar. Yeah, and that's, and that's, that's a great one. Health. Board of Health and the Board of Health is a four member committee and that's been a challenge. Um, so I, I'm, I'm glad that that, um, that there's a nomination for us to consider for the Board of Health. Um, so we'll be looking at that in March. Um, I had asked during our last council term and, and I'll put this out with all of you um, to invite Brian Foote in to meet with us. Um, Brian was out on paternity leave at the end of the last council term. I'm still very interested in learning more about the Arts Council and how, um, what supports he may need, um, you know, to sort of get things back on track and, and other counselors, I'd love to hear um, what you think about that. Uh, Councilor Perry and then Councilor Labarge. I, I wholeheartedly endorse that idea. I think that, especially me being, being an artist and coming from my background, I think that um, it would be nice to see some resolution and some work on the Arts Council after the last year or so. Um, so however we can make that happen, I would love to see that. And Council Labarge? Yes, I would like to really have that be a priority. I mean, mm -hmm. you brought it up before last year and he was out on a medical leave there. And with all the emails and phone calls that I've received, I think that it would be wonderful if we could get Brian Foote to come in. Councilor Gore. Yeah, I think it would be good to have him come in. I've also received emails about the Arts Council in the past, and it would be good to have a conversation with him. Okay. I'll put forth that request then um, with Blair, Laura to the mayor's office, um, hopefully for March. Um, the, the other thing that I, I've talked about with Councillor Nash that I wanted to bring up with you all is... Um, when DPW puts their list of paving contracts together, which I believe is in the spring. Council Labarge, do you know exactly when that happens? Contracts for or what? When, when DPW puts together their paving schedule for the following year um, before things go out to bid, yep. um, that um, I would love to invite Director Lascalia in during that just so that we can talk about what's planned for the next year um, and really get a sense of what'll be going on word by word. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. It wouldn't great. hurt to notify her as early as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Um, are there other issues that, that are floating to the top of your minds now, counselors? That's okay. It will come up and, and feel free to be in touch, but um, I, I will do my best to get Brian Foote and Director Lascalia on the schedule for upcoming meetings. Um, Director Lascalia, when it most makes sense, when, when she can share with us a look ahead to the next year. Um, which brings us to 
item 10. Uh, I would take a, a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Okay. I'll second that. All right. I've lost my way alphabetically here. I think um, I think we're at Councillor Gore first. Yes. Okay, Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Perry. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Okay, so that concludes our meeting. Thank you all so much. It's wonderful to see you all.